So if you could create this program, if you were sitting in the White House and had the Detroit executives there, would you support uh, the destruction of these older cars or would you say we should give them to poor people and realize that these cars have a, a limited lifespan but that they still have some productivity left if we assume that they were driven onto the lot and didn't break down once there? Well, with the exception of the, of the scenario that David um, offered, the 2000 Durango, I guess um, to your point, and Jessica, if I were king and writing this program, I would have written it dip somewhat different. And I would have probably excluded the the ten year car or newer, and and I don't know why to have the the uh, the eighty eighty four requirement nineteen eighty four requirement on the end. So I would say anything over ten years, and then uh, let the economics decide uh, determine whether a twelve year old or fifteen year old car would have fit the program. Um, and I'm I'm not saying all, all that being critical of of Congress, who I think. Um, I, I do agree with their overall policy objective on this, um, and, and we do support it. So I don't want to. I'm not running from from what what they did. It's just that in I, I think it could have been done better. Um, to answer your question, and and uh, and if if we had done it, the program that way, we would t be taking even more of the older the beaters off. These are the. Let cars me give, I'll give you a better example than okay. my two. I have an older car. Oh, you car. came up with a better example. Right. Good. Um, yeah. That didn't work out for <laughs> he's, me. He, um, he's going through all the cars that are up on blocks. <laughs> right. In his right. Front yard. No, I have a Honda I drive every day. It's a CRV. It is great on gas. And um, I'm sure it's a lot better than most cars people are driving. There's no reason for me to trade that car. It's not helping the environment for me to get rid of that car in any significant way. Um, I, I just I don't buy the argument that there are, what, 250 million vehicles registered in this country, some, something like that? Probably so. Mm -hmm. Almost half, I think, are trucks and small trucks. Is that, is that fair? This will have almost no effect on the environment overall. It's hard for me to believe that a few hundred cars can move the needle in Denver. Um, but even if that's so, those are cars that are being sold every day anyway. I mean, those are the new cars. We have cafe standards. Cars are just much more efficient than they were before. Even oh, without absolutely. Any kind of no, and like it's it. not the new cars. The, the, I mean, really, to, to resolve the particle emission problem and the ozone problem and the asthma problem and the brown cloud problem, it's the old cars. You recognize those cars. You, you know them when you see them. You pull up behind them. The light's red. The light turns green. And you stay back for that car to get out of the way. Those are the cars that but those really need to be off the road. But those aren't the cars that are being traded in right now. Well, the they should be. Perhaps, but they're not. You know, I mean, the cars that are being traded in are better than that. They're getting, I forgot what you said the average was. 15.8. So we're not really hitting the problem that we're supposed to be uh, dealing with, correct? I mean, this, this program is not getting the, that clunker off the road that emits this huge cloud into my car and when it's in front of me at a red light. Well, well we are. I mean, uh, but maybe, maybe not um, totally, um, but, it, but those cars qualify as well as long as they're post 84. Let me ask you this, does this drive up uh, the cost of a new car on average? If, you're, if we're talking, um, how many cars are we up to now? 500,000 more cars uh, will be able to participate if this $2 billion increase is approved. Already 185,000 uh, new cars have been purchased. So that's a huge uh, increase in demand for vehicles. So are there any restrictions on uh, manufacturers or sellers of cars from raising the price to that meet the demand because there are, there are shortages. You're hearing spot shortages around the country right. where people are looking for the right. specific, you know, hybrid or whatever else. No, that's an excellent question and, and I think uh, there will be some marketplace, especially with the, with the additional money, there will be some marketplace challenges. But as far as the price on the new car, no, I, that's not a concern. Um, Why the, isn't that a concern? Because when you go into a car dealer, everybody knows that you yeah, you, you take a deep breath and you go in there and you put on your fighting face and there's a negotiation process. So how can we ensure that the price of these cars isn't going up in direct proportion to the subsidy from the government? Well, I, I think both in the law and in, in reality, um, we can verify that. And first in the law, the law required that if any incentives were on a certain model by the manufacturer that they couldn't remove those incentives. So, so that's why you see, a, um, you'll see the ads in, in, in the Denver Post uh, where David works, you'll see ads where they have the, the rebate calculated in, the manufacturer's rebate, maybe some dealer cash as well, and other incentives and they say, okay, here's a $23,000 car and here's how you can get it for $99.95, for example. And I use that for example. Um, so so the, that's still happening. 
and and will continue to happen. Where I think a better argument, Jessica, on the on the on the value of cars that this program will um, affect. Some will say adversely, some will say not, and that's the value of the used car, the the five, ten, fifteen year old used car. But the value on those will go up, and that's not really a bad thing. But why? But I'm sorry. Why? why? Why would the value go up on a used car? It, it well, first off, it in marketplace it already has. It's used car values, late model used car values were already up about 30 percent just in the first half of the year, and that had more to do with the fact that we weren't selling new cars, so values of used cars were, were coming up, and that was probably at some point in time those lines are going to not completely cross, but get, get close enough that the new cars were going to start selling again. But um, why I say it's, it's potentially a good, a good situation for consumers is that now their trade is worth more money when they go to trade it. Not only now during the program, even if they don't qualify for the program, but later after the program's over. For used car dealers who are not able to participate because they don't sell the new cars, for used car dealers, the entire value of their used car lot is, is up. And, and uh, um, that, that's a marketplace situation. It was already moving that, in that direction. This, this will um, fuel it to a degree. Do you think we'll see um, any sort of subsidy program for late model used cars? Because if we have a 2005 hybrid, um, isn't that car a valuable part, or is this uh, part of our environmental strategy, or is this more about just helping Detroit manufacture more new cars? Well, I think it's it's really not about Detroit, although um, I mean, I, I, 40, I don't think so. It, if, as of today, forty-five percent of all the cars sold have been from one of the major Detroit makers, and thirty-seven percent have been Japanese. Well, and and um, I don't think it was just about Detroit. If it had been just about Detroit, it would have been uh, applicable just to um, domestic cars, just to GM, Ford, and Chrysler cars. So um, that was debated by some in, in Congress. It didn't get very far. It wasn't something that we could have supported uh, because we represent all the, all the dealers, uh, uh, both domestic and, and international nameplate. So um, I don't think it's just about Detroit. I think what it's about is the industry in general. It's a t uh, the auto industry makes up 10% of the overall uh, uh, economy. It's an important sector in the economy. Certainly it's a d an important sector for Michigan and, and, and the heavy manufacturing states, uh, the, the high volume manufacturing states, but it's an important manufacturing, I mean an important sector in our economy. I have a superb idea actually. We've got about one more minute here. I so think that we should have word. a bailout for newspapers where it, once a year uh, every subscriber is allowed to allocate whatever amount of tax dollars the government feels like and that should boost our industry. I think it would be con contrived market and not real in the sense that I would be taking tax. You need tax better lobbyists. That's what you need. That's true. You need Tim to come over <laughs> and lobby for the Denver Post. Taking money from one person and just handing it to another is not uh, an increase in demand, and that's why I don't right. think in the long run um, it's going to, it, it'll make a huge difference. I hope, you know, in a sense, I hope it does. If we're going to do the program, it might as well work. Right. But um, th that, that's the main concern I have with it, because if this economic theory works, then we should apply it to every single area that's struggling, not just cars. Real quick, what's your prediction? Where are we going to be sitting a year from now in terms of demand for new and used cars? Well, I think that will overall uh, um, that will be determined more by the overall economy. It, there are other signs that the economy is coming back and uh, and starting to come back, and I think this is helping fuel that. Uh, so, so and to that degree, it's it's great. I, I think for um, the the newspapers will do better because of this program. Because That's true. We have a lot more ads. Because uh, of the advertisements, the electronic media, the newspapers, the internet. And, and therein lies the stimulus effect for it. So it's going to help. Um, I want a strong newspaper industry. I want a strong media. I want a strong electronic um, media as well. I think it's about time we have uh, subsidies for nonprofit, public policy oriented organizations. And that's what I'm going to be lobbying for. Fortunately, we've ran out of time here. But David Harsani, and so much thanks to you too, Mr. Jackson. Uh, this is Independent Thinking, and I'm Jessica Corey. Until next time, thank you so much for watching. Jab, bamboos of new canoes of pepity pop she call. I mean, you keep on talking, but you don't know where to turn it all.